Hello, in this episode I want to ask who was the God that Jesus and his followers worshipped? Jesus said Allah, not Deus, Deus being the Roman uh, Western name for the deity. Um, we have today the Aramaic Gospels, these are known as the Peshitta, uh, an Arabic, uh, Aramaic translation of the New Testament. And in those Gospels, they present Jesus as praying to and praising the God whom he worshipped, naming him Allah or Aloha, the Eastern and Western vocalizations of the Aramaic. Aramaic is a language so close in structure and vocabulary and sensibility to the Quranic Arabic that Arab viewers of Mel Gibson's snuff movie, The Passion of the Christ, which came out some years ago, could follow much of the dialogue um, and crusaders in every southern multiplex doubtless wondered about that. So uh, Jesus is portrayed in the earliest Gospels in the New Testament in Greek. In the morning it says in Mark, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place and there he prayed to God. So he, here is a typical Jew doing what they do. They Jesus surrendered to his Lord and his words, whether or not they are authentically preserved in the uh, Gospels, which is uh, much debated, indicate perfect slavehood to El Elohim in Hebrew, or Allah in Aramaic, Allaha in Syriac, Allah, the true name of the one God of Abraham. Um, after the end of his ministry, we read uh, in the Bible, Jesus' followers continue to worship uh, the Jewish God in congregation at the temple, as it says in Acts chapter 3, verse 1. One day Philip and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon. So this is uh, after Jesus' ascension into heaven. Now, the hour of prayer at three in the afternoon, it's not like in the Anglican church where you have like, you go along, you just have some prayers. This is the hour of sacrifice as well. So the Jewish system with its uh, uh, sacrifices detailed in Leviticus and the Jewish understanding of God is still very much uh, adhered to by the chief disciples of Jesus, Peter and John, in this case. So um, like Jesus, they continue to worship the God of the prophets. Um, th uh, there's a, a, a very uh, high profile, famous um, Roman Catholic priest Hans Kung uh, is a very distinguished Catholic theologian and uh, he wrote uh, a while ago uh, that this uh, community, this group of people was the original Jewish community of the first disciples of Jesus, the original Jerusalem community and the communities east of Jerusalem. In other words, the very first paradigm of Christianity before the shift to the Greek Hellenistic paradigm. That was a quote from Hans Kung. So explaining that uh, basically the earliest Christianity wasn't Christianity, it was Judaism. Jesus didn't found a new religion. The earliest disciples after his ascension also continued to be observant Jews. It was only later, uh, partly uh, or mainly to do with the theologizing of the Hellenistic uh, Greek Jew Jesus, uh, Paul of Tarsus that we find this shift a paradigm shift to uh, a, a quite a different understanding where you have a saviour cult, uh, where the, the Messiah becomes a saviour figure rather than God himself is the centre of the faith. And Kung knows that, uh, that primal Christianity or Judaism contains the theology of Judaism and Islam and obliquely he proposes this as a basis for reconciliation. Um, so it's fascinating that such a senior Roman Catholic theologian should see that um, and also propose this as a, a way of bringing together the faiths in a common word. Uh, and that very term um, is found in the Quran as well in uh, a famous verse which says, Say, O people of the scripture, now that's of course the, uh, the Jews and the Christians, come to a common word between us and you that we shall worship none but God, and that we shall ascribe no partner to him, and that none of us shall take others for lords besides God. And if they turn away, then say, bear witness that we are we are they 
who have surrendered unto him. That's our Imran 364. It's interesting, the bit there at the end says that we are of those who have surrendered unto him. In some translations, English translation of the Quran, it says that we are Muslims. But actually the term means there, people have surrendered to their Lord, as Jesus did and as Peter and John are shown as doing in the New Testament. So um, I think that's a, a very interesting story that uh, Jesus and his disciples in the Aramaic Gospel said Allah. They didn't say Deus. They were not Roman. They were Jews. And Jewish theology and Islamic theology um, is essentially the same. Uh, apart from that, and quite different from that, is developed Christian theology, which believes, obviously, that the Father is fully God, the Son is fully God, the Holy Spirit is fully God. Three. Three persons, each of which is fully God. And then with the rider, just added on, oh, but there's one God. Now, make of that what you will. I call that um, polytheistic monotheism. <laughs> it's deliberately an oxymoron. It's like saying, oh, look at that round square. Or the look at the squareness of that circle. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. But anyway, so we we have this kind of oxymoron, but the uh, the un on oxymoronic, the unincoherent Jewish and Islamic conception of God, the stresses the unity of God, the oneness and unity of God is clearly attested to by Jesus in the earliest Gospels, obviously in the Quran, and uh, it is the faith that they followed. According, to, even you even find indications of that in the Christian Bible today. So um, I hope you found that of interest. Till next time.